Good morning, folks. We've got some great top stories today. And of course, there's a big story coming later today as well, along with the big weather event. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours were relatively quiet with the continued progression of the large sunspot group. We do not have much in terms of mid-latitude coronal holes, plenty of plasma filaments dancing around the limb, however. Of course, the focus is on the bright active region and the sunspots beneath it, even though they have not begun to flare. I want to first show you what the magnetic view of them looked like two days ago. What looks like both red and blue sunspots is a trick of perspective that only happens at the very edge. The blue part is only the trailing penumbral surface magnetism. And so now that the sunspot has turned in further and garnered a couple little sunspots trailing it, we can pull the magnetic view again and see both the penumbral magnetic zone that had fooled some people two days ago and the much smaller blue and red dots of the newer, smaller sunspots. Let's go to the solar wind. We have seen a slight intensification of the telemetry most of the last day, and as it slowly scales and steps up, Earth's magnetic field has begun taking a bit more instability, but has kept us out of geomagnetic storm conditions. Let's jump to earthquakes. Another mid-range six-pointer struck well south in the Atlantic Ocean. Those pressure releases in the middle of nowhere are preferable. And speaking of the ground, an animation of the Anak Krakatoa eruption and tsunami from last year was put out yesterday might recall we saw those waves crash into an unsuspecting city. Hopefully nobody in the U.S. is unsuspecting of the weather the next two days. Snowstorm, way overpowered for April coming tonight and tomorrow it starts dropping tornadoes a bit further east. Eyes on it. Up next is a super lightning article and video combining NASA and ESA studies of sprites, blue jets, elves, red fairies, and they didn't have to open a Tolkien book to do it. This is how the global electric circuit current that descends from the ionosphere returns up to complete the circuit. Now, holy glowing plants, Batman. It's actually how they look when selecting the perfect wavelengths of UV light, which the ACO-3 has done and is about to start delivering to us from orbit. I don't think I'm out of line when I say nobody has ever seen our planet through those kinds of eyes, and I can't wait. Quick share up next as we have a cool look at magnetohydrodynamic photospheric simulations attempting to determine how the quiet solar regions generate such powerful magnetic energy. Don't forget, in just a few hours the first photo of a black hole is going to come out and our super analysis will begin. Until then, read why the electric charge is important because when the physicists recognize the plasma universe aspect to them, the charge will be all they can think about. Last but not least, the kinetic heating of the solar wind and space weather storms on Jupiter extends much farther down into the atmosphere than on our own. This direct kinetic heating is easily seen on the infrared images, but perhaps one might consider ohmic heating on our own planet and how the access to the global electric circuit takes that auroral heat all the way to the ground. Take that, Jupiter. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.